Well, um, just in terms of wrapping up, I was trying to spend a few minutes thinking about all the territory we covered today, and it was pretty significant. And I, you know, kind of looking at my notes here, I, I, I would share the following. First, I think what Chuck Haas lets us know through his lecture and through his uh, talk today was that transdisciplinary collaboration is going to be required in this circular water economy that's developing. We have to collaborate, um, whether we're doing research uh, or whether we're doing utility work. I think uh, what I took away from Joan's talk was that we have some serious challenges in front of us, but what everybody in this room needs to understand is those challenges translate into opportunities. These are opportunities for young people uh, to, to uh, build a, a career of research or opportunities for utilities to provide great services to the communities they serve. And so, yeah, there's challenges, but the other side of every challenge is an opportunity. Brian reminded us that uh, uh, risks of pathogens in drinking water is not some abstraction. Fit for purpose water reuse projects are going on right now all over the United States, so we have to understand this, this is not an abstract problem. This is a real world problem. I think that Jim told us about uh, and, and really reminded us that our utilities, when they're at their best, can adapt to changing conditions. And this is a, a kind of a refrain uh, against government that you're not in, uh, unable to change and adapt in changing conditions. And I think this idea that we can build source control programs that help protect public health and enable these water reuse systems is a great example of where government can adjust uh, to changing market conditions. Dr. Glennon's presentation, I think the keynote, I think the big takeaway there for me was to, uh, that, you know, it's probably useful for us to give some consideration to the fact that how we price water and the signals that we send to consumers and other actors in a market, we, we should be conscious of that. I know, I know that after running a utility for 20 years, setting rates, we didn't spend a lot of time thinking about the market signals that our pricing sent. We thought about a lot of different aspects about what signals it sent, but we didn't think about the market per se and how that affected the adoption of new technologies. Uh, Ufuk reminded us, that, and we talked a lot about that hey, the conversation is ongoing. This current scheme of log reduction values that we use, uh, the basis, the data basis for it is a continuing conversation. And uh, that as we, we move forward, we want to uh, look and see is that how can we accommodate new technologies, new treatment trains, but at the same time maintain our primary duty to protect public health. Andy, in his own way, told us that alter, uh, there, you know, there's alternative treatment processes out there. And, and the question is, can, can those alternative treatment processes either in conjunction with those that we use today or uh, in other types of treatment trains, can they maintain that public health consideration? And I think Andy's convinced they can, and I think there's research out there that is going to prove him either wrong or right, and I'm looking forward to that. I thought it was really especially, uh, one of the things that's close and near, near and me, dear to me is, is big data. I think that, that, that understanding data, using data to improve utility management and the, uh, public health is a no-brainer. We have all experienced the um, impact and the quality of our life that we get from uh, big data, from being able to analyze data in real time, and it'll have no different impact in the water world. I think that uh, um, when we can use technologies like data gathering and real time monitoring to improve the operation of wastewater treatment plants, to improve best practices around reuse, and to improve the bottom line, how much money it costs our, uh, the citizens to, and ratepayers to, to get water delivered, I think those are, those, are, those are important issues for us to consider. I think Jeff really brought into focus for us how big the work, that, that scope of work that is out there to be done to support this work that we're, that, that, that we're, that, that we're thinking about. Uh, just, I, I spent like just a couple minutes while Jeff was talking, thinking about the number of people that, and, their, and their intellect that have to be brought to bear to solve those problems that he presented just in those few, very few, few slides. So we've got a lot of work again, a lot of opportunity. And I think that Mark uh, closes up by reminding us that the work that we do uh, is impactful to human beings, not just on a local basis where you work or where your clients reside, but really on a global scale. So this work that uh, we've committed our lives to translates into the quality of life for people, not just here in the United States, but all around the world. And I think that we shall be proud of that. And, I, and I'll feel comfortable closing the Clark Prize on that note, thanking you for your service and thanking you for being here. I look forward to seeing you here at this event next year. Thank you very much.